Oli, we out here. This is your girl, Eat of Wood fans, Crystal. I know you all are accustomed to seeing me in the kitchen, but today we out here. We have collaborated with Visit Trinidad to bring you good eats from these streets. But we're not really in the streets. We are at Cafe Mariposa, nestled in the hills of Lopino. So we're in the northern range, just north of Aruca, and we are here to find out about what these people are doing up in here. Now, Lopino always brings back fond memories for me because it's one of the first, first field trips that you make when you're in primary school. So, you know, that's a long time ago, but not too long, eh? Not too long, right? So, to give you a little history about Lopino, Lopino was named after the French Count who settled here in the early 1800s. The estate has been restored and is a museum, and while well, the iconic Coco House is still there, standing by the river. Now, Lopino is filled with history and tradition. There's such a strong Spanish influence. If you're thinking Parang, yes, plenty Parang. And in my opinion, it makes it one of the top 20 places to visit while in Trinidad. Now, Cafe Mariposa, I've been here before. It is definitely a gem, certainly off the beaten path. It is filled with nature, history, amazing food. That's why we're here. And they are drenched in family tradition. So if you're into hummingbirds, zooming past the ears, hot piping cocoa tea served in an enamel cup and the simplicity of a slow life then cafe mariposa is for you so come with me let me see what they're cooking for us today good morning ladies good morning good morning good morning <laughs> Kassel. welcome so i have met you guys before this is what for restaurant week restaurant last year or something there was yeah. seven of you yeah. correct me if i'm wrong seven might have been five might have been about five yes. but this morning we meet with part of the team from cafe mariposa let me tell you something these ladies are super special and they could sing too i don't know if they will do a little singing for us today but introduce yourselves for us i'm hyacinth hyacinth marcia marcia and brenda and brenda and brenda you are the cocoa tea queen that's what you're yes. called yes listen <laughs> well, yeah, no this is by no exaggeration the best <laughs> cocoa tea ever i have ever had we're going to have it today right so we're going behind the scenes come let me show them let me see let me see where the magic happens okay. we started from scratch eh? so guys all you're getting are behind the scenes behind the scenes there's so not many people let get to see this eh? of how the best cocoa i've ever tasted <laughs> is going to be made and brenda the cocoa tea queen is going to show us how we're going to do it now this is cocoa this is ground cocoa that you all do yourselves, yeah. right? They actually yeah. have it brand Tory Van. I think it's the yeah. name of your cocoa. Listen, the best. Get it. Get it. So I have three cups of water here on the Boiling, stove. Boiling, right. Okay. And then I put in two bay leaves and a piece of spice. Bay leaves some mustard. I see bay leaves, man, across yeah. there. <laughs> and then I have to grate some nutmeg. Nutmeg. Mm -hmm. So grate the nutmeg. So you add the spices and the, the, the bay leaf and stuff first. They want to extract right. the flavor from that right. first. Gotcha. It's very strong, huh? That's okay. We like it strong on these parts. <laughs> What's it's it very rich? strong. It's very strong. Okay, so and, and that has that for? has to boil. Okay, it has to boil for, for about for? about 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so that you will get all the cocoa and all the spices infused. Nice. And then we will add our milk. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna add our milk. Right. So the water is at a rolling boil, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Nice. <laughs> that rich and that should be good mm -hmm. we'll strain it eh? this will have all the little grit I don't mind the grit yet that's fine <laughs> what I've been waiting for yes and I know some only going to say she going to drink that hot thing I'm very skilled in that area She used very simple ingredients. So what is making a difference in this cocoa tea is the actual cocoa powder that you all use. The composition of it is what is giving it a unique flavor. Because you also what, what we did, milk, condensed, condensed milk, mm. evaporated milk, bay leaf, cinnamon. You standard stuff to making cocoa tea. But what is making a difference is their cocoa powder mm -hmm. and it is. Oh, this is, is just great. And when you come to Cafe Mariposa, this is the welcome drink. Imagine going someplace and your welcome drink is a piping hot cup of cocoa tea. So 
so we have quite a spread here. Marcia, yeah. take us through, please. Take us through. So our first item that you would get is whatever fruit is in season. And right now in season is mami apple. Nice. Okay. And we've drizzled that with a little bit of mami apple compote, like the liquid from the, the compote. The syrup from it. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that will be spiced up with a little bit of uh, cinnamon and nutmeg. So that should be coming through together with the tartness of the mami apple. It's giving me a mild palm city flavor. Firm like a mango, not too sweet, and a little drizzle of the compote over it. Just brings it out. It just brings it out, right? I mean, it can't go wrong. It can't go wrong. <laughs> next, what's up next? So the next thing is your ponage, which was made from fresh cassava. Mm -hmm. So we grated the cassava and boiled it with spices, local spices. Right, which we saw. Mm -hmm. And that now is a nice hot porridge right so that will start to prepare your tummy for the rest you know okay nice and at the top of it we drizzled a little bit of fresh turmeric from our garden mm -hmm. and some orange peel so all of that should be infusing and at the base of it you have the mommy apple com compote okay, nice. as your sweetener nice so there's no sugar in it there's no milk in it but those things will be but still it acts as a it porridge acts, uh, yeah. but that's why it came up with ponage, right? Ponage, correct, because it's cassava. Okay, nice. So. It's very light. It's not like in your hit you in your face cassava. Mm -hmm. It. Hmm. I mean, and this also would be great for those who are Glu lactose intolerant La gluten or gluten intolerant. gluten intolerant, or they, or they can't have oats and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Hmm. So celiac people. This is celiac really, color. really nice. The citrus persons when you usually associate porridge with anything citrus. citrus. So the citrus addition to it is really love the texture. And it it was put in last, so it mm -hmm. should not be overpowering. It's just no, it's not. It's very light. I, I thought it was gonna I thought it was gonna hit me like cassava in my face. It's not, it's very mm -hmm. light. And as you say, it's a perfect start to open up to the palate and everything palette, else. Yeah. All right, already. I like how Here you enjoy your food. <laughs> well, food is to be enjoyed. Yes, it is. All right. So the next we have mm -hmm. our coconut bakes, pot roasted. Right. And those will be accompanied by the eggs that we cooked with ruku and stuffed with a little uh, fried plantain. Now I love eggs, I, I, and I always look for different ways of trying it. But this here is certainly out of the box. Yeah, we are generally out of the box. Kind of people. <laughs> yes. Because, of course, we have so many people who have problems with milk. We use coconut milk instead to make, to make the little omelet. And we whip that in there with all the seasonings. My little delicate touch, as I call it, is the pudina or the fat leaf thyme. We fry and that will give you a little crisp at the end mm -hmm. and add a nice little Punch flavor. Of flavor. And then well, the color is coming from and the, the ruku. ruku. So, I mean, eggs. we have to use what we have as local and mm -hmm. what gives our flavor, Are giving you, it, our flavor to things. Gotcha. And, and it means it, it's like indigenous, not only indigenous to the country, but to the people. Yeah. Right? And so... We are colorful and we are beautiful and it comes out in our food right. and in our taste. So I have my eggs here and I'm going for a nice fluffy, fluffy, fluffy bake here. It's giving me a sort of English muffin vibe. It looks like that. Mm -hmm. The size, yes. Yeah, the size. But the answer is just to be handy. Yeah. All right, here what? I want to try these things separately first. Yeah, that, that would really try be a good it. idea. Separately, okay. I want to get a perfect bite with the eggs, the plantain. Nothing is overpowering, nothing is competing with each other. You get the slight sweetness of the plantain in there, the eggs, the herbs coming through a little bit. So fluffy. Mm. Wholesome. I can understand why you say well, after you have this, you're good for the day. <laughs> well, I might be good for a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> you're serious. So now we know what is an authentic mariposa breakfast. Mm -hmm. Innovative people, people who push the boundaries on food, what food's supposed to taste like, 
I mean, you cannot get more. This is farm to table right here. Everything that we are eating here is literally from the farm to from the table, the, down the to village. the eggs, from the village, right? It is sustainable. Almost, I would say 0%, almost 0% wastage. They even use the cocoa leaves. They repurpose the dried cocoa leaves and make it into a nice little garnish or emblem on the plate that That's carries cool. over into their logo, which is the, mari the butterfly, which is, we all know in Spanish, is mariposa. This is an experience. It's not just about eating the food, but it's an experience. You're out here in nature, the hummingbirds. I mean, well, they just had a visit. Hi, Raphael. Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So we're here with Raphael. We took a little detour from Cafe Mariposa to come to Aqua Biba <laughs> because here is where you all have actual tilapia, right? Correct. So the tilapia that we're going to be eating, well, again, I am going to be eating, is actually grown here. So you're going to see how it's done. So Raphael is going to take us on a little tour, right? All right, sure, Let's this go. way. So welcome to Aqua Viva. We have been in operation roughly over 20 years now. Wow. And the genesis of Agua Viva, right. which means live in water uh, in Spanish, <laughs> is this tilapia pond that we have right before us. Mm -hmm. um, originally, we didn't plan to have the tilapia pond, but what we discovered is that it's an, a natural underwater spring from the valley itself. Oh, so you're all just, okay, yeah. making, um, taking advantage of that underwater Correct. spring. Wow. So using the natural resources um, in the environment. In the environment. We also okay. have a spring from the nearby mountain. Okay. That um, channels the water in the pond. And we also channel water into the pond through uh, natural guttering that flows in the pond. So it's a totally eco-friendly right. system that we right. have here. Okay. All right. So we have the red tilapia and the silver tilapia. And over time, they've interbred, so we actually get different hues. Okay, so that some would be of very a blue hue, some of a purple hue, even some of a gold wow. hue. So how much? Well, how many tilapia? I guess how does it like? They have a season. Like what is the cycle? Their life cycle. The life cycle from from when they're born to adult is usually about three months from from being from, born okay. to, to maturity. To mature, okay, where you could eat. Short. Yes. Okay. Um, but we have natural predators in the pond from the nearby river as well. Okay, that, that which would be like... This is the wolfish or the locally we call it wabin. Okay, what yes. about wabin? Yes. Wolfish making it sound nice. So recently we caught one about five pounds. Nice, Jeez. huge size, yeah. So that has actually controlled the fish population. The fish population, okay. All right, Raphael, so you guys also have a garden center, as we see, specializing in medicinal herbs and plants, correct, right? That is so correct. give us a little walkthrough and tell us what you have. All right, sure. So we have a side with ornamental plants, and on this side here, we have the medicinal herbs, right. spices, um, culinary plants as well that you, okay. you could use. So I recognize this one, the carapuli, which we use traditionally in curry, right? That is correct. We also have things like the urin bush, the carpenter urin bush. Urin bush? Yes. It's actually called... Um, yes, it's good for the urinary For the urine, right. Okay. All right. And we also introduce in plants from abroad mm -hmm. into the country. So that's not natural to the country, but right. it also has medicinal benefits. Okay. So that includes like the fever few and a different variety of the plantain. Okay. Which is... Which is um, Broadleaf plant. Okay. Yes, which is what we usually have. Mm -hmm. We also have the ribgrass variety. This one doesn't really have a smell. So okay. people, you could eat it like a lettuce. Oh, okay. Yes. So it's like a, okay, nice one. All right. So things like lemongrass. Right. Ashwagandha, which is not common Ashwaga here. Yeah. yeah. Ashwagandha became kind of big. Like in the past couple of years, it Correct. became, yeah, it became really big. Correct. Various mints, uh, basils. Nice. Lemongrass. Let me see. Yeah, even things Pineapple like... Pineapple mint. Yes. It's, it's similar to the apple mint. It just the, the difference is the pineapple mint has a, a white rim on some of the leaves. All right, which is what I'm seeing there. That is what distinguishes it from the apple. Oh, wow. Mm. There's stevia. Okay. How about stevia? Scorpion tail. Now, my grandma used to make one called, she used to make a tea called DTPE. DTPE. You know it? Do you yeah, have this it? Is, this is DTPE. Oh. Yeah. oh my gosh, this is it. She used to make it. With um milk. Okay. Yeah, so that's how I know it. Right. Strange, right? But that's how I know it. Yes. It's a pay. Wow. You guys should get one in honor for she's no longer with us, but oh, it's something that I remember, yeah. Wow. 
I know them old people, they know the thing. So yes. it was always the tepe tea we had. Glad yeah, they, they tend to use it. the tepe for like the eyes. Ah, it yeah. was good for the eyes. Yeah. Okay. I have not seen that in years, to be honest. So I'm very happy that you guys have it. Raphael, thank you so much for showing us around. I, for one, am very pleased to see that you all have the tepe. I told you how, you know, how important, how the special connection. that plant and the connection that I have with my grandmother. She used to make tea out of the tepe and they actually have it. So if you're looking for the tepe, check out Agua Viva because they have it. Yes, we do. <laughs> thank you so much. Unfortunately, I didn't catch a, t a fish and I wasn't able to catch a tilapia. You know, sometimes they catch some, sometimes, sometimes they, they don't, don't catch some. That is correct. But um, we're going to be going back into Cafe Mariposa because we're going to see behind the scenes of them preparing the fish that they would have gotten from Agua Viva. So, Rafael, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Yeah, Take enjoy care. the rest. You too. So Marcia, we have pumpkin soup here. Tell me, talk pumpkin soup mm -hmm. cooked with cocoa, and it's not cocoa powder; it's ground cocoa. Wow, it's so smooth. It is. I'm tasting a little bit of the um the grit of the cocoa. cocoa. Of course, the reason for that is because cocoa has good antioxidant level, mm. and it's good for your body. You added a little turmeric in here too. Mm. No. So this the pumpkin is the, was your pumpkin really was really yellow, yeah. wow. Mm. This is good. What are the soups you all do? You do a lentil, cocoa, and turmeric. Mm-hmm. Well, a color. You all blend that as well, smooth or is it oh, yeah, chunky yeah. or is it no, smooth? No, no chunky soups there. Okay. We are the only chunky ones. <laughs> oh god, look trouble here. You're trying to get me chunky now. <laughs> no. You're trying to get me chunky now. This sandwich was made mm -hmm. for a multiple of reasons, eh? but first of all, we were in the lockdown stage. So this is the height of COVID. All right. This is like sometime in 2020, maybe about August wow. or September. A few of us in the kitchen and my nephew, Isaiah, mm -hmm. he said, Auntie, we had to come up with something like a real wicked sandwich or something, you know, Auntie. And I said, well, no bread. First thing, no bread. Okay, well, you're already... Right, because we want to move away. I said, because we don't know what's going to happen to the world. We don't know if we'll ever have wheat again. I know we uh, started having so those to think. think that way, you right. know. And, uh, so I said, we have plenty planting up the road, you know. And um, so we said, okay, planting. Mm -hmm. oh. Right, so you have actual ground cacao cooked in coconut oil. Okay, all and then the I, chicken. So then I trickle all, I, I drizzle all of the seasonings into the pot so that it starts to sizzle. Right. And then I put the, the, the chicken in there. Things like onion and garlic and mm -hmm. stuff, regular stuff. But we put bay leaf in the pot. See, we have cassava. That will give it a crunch and that will add a texture to it that will be different, you know. Right. And so we were into that conversation. I said, on the chutney, we want to sell the chutney. So you have to put the chutney in the sandwich. So when they taste the chutney in they the sandwich, they chutney. want to buy the oh, chutney. They want to buy the chutney. Oh, And <laughs> then we have pico de gallo. Pico de gallo. Right. And you have arugula. Arugula. Arugula paired with cocoa is like an awesome experience in itself. <laughs> so the bitterness of the arugula now. Right. The dark flavor of the cocoa. Then you have the pineapple brightness. Right. Those things together. It's just a fusion. It's like a boom. <laughs> okay. And then you top it off with the plant on top. Okay. Yes. The first thing that I tasted was the herbs. Which I think on the chicken. Right. So the belly, the shadow benny that came through. Mm -hmm. Then I got a little bit of the arugula. You are very right. The little bitterness of that arugula did so much in mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And then I get the brightness from the pico de gallo. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it is, here's what it's surprising me it's tasting clean. Mm -hmm. I, if you understand what I mean, yeah. it, it's not muddled flavors, it's tasting very clean. Oh, this mm -hmm. is lovely. This is lovely. 
the plantain provides sweetness, but not too much sweetness. So it's not like you're eating. It's not like you're eating sugar. Correct. It's not like you're eating sugar. Just a light, a light touch. This is great. This is great. This is great. This is great. I love this. Bright, fresh, clean. And your stomach not feeling as if it'll get this turn. Yeah. Yeah. All the flavors come through. In a harmonious way. Mm. What do you say? Better let... What is it? Better your belly bust. Better your belly bust than belly good food, food waste. waste. So it is clear that belly going to be busting today. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny. So Bianca, your sisters told us that you were kind of like the mastermind for mm -hmm. what Cafe Mariposa is now. So, you know, give us a little backstory. Oh, look how dragonfly. <laughs> well, we're out in nature, right? Yeah. So give us a little backstory. Um, what was your vision? What was the concept? And if what Cafe Mariposa is now, if it's exactly mm -hmm. to what you had envisioned or if it's more than that? Because we won music festival in 1984. Right. Our family won the family class of music festival. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, Lopino had no telephones. And right. people would just turn up at the door to see these seven girls sing. Okay. And daddy was a very proud man. He used to call us his flowers in his flower garden. Right. He used to say, girls, come and sing for these people, entertain these people. Mm -hmm. And we would just give them anything we had prepared in the house. If we were doing something or if we just go outside and find a dry coconut and make, and make something. something. Okay. And um, that over the years was just, it was a lot, you know. People just came and I said... Um, I mean, I went away to live. Right. I went to Venezuela and I, I saw so much potential. What the Venezuelans did, and any, any little chance they got, they would make something out of anything. Right, That's okay. It. And I, when I came back home, I said, but we were still doing that. You know, I said, let us have a little cafe instead and just uh, do tea in the evenings from three to six. Okay. And I started to do that underneath daddy's garage. Roof. So that's why. So Cafe Mariposa My really started off as a cafe. As a cafe. Okay, so gotcha. Seven tea in the evening. Seven tea in the evening. And I started to do tortillas, which was a right. quick thing, you know. So I would do corn tortillas and flour tortillas. And, and all this um, is from scratch, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I had the idea of actually doing um, a cafe at the Lopino historical site. Right. Where the village would get involved. Mm -hmm. And we'd rust at the time. Everybody come and you just do... Uh, you know, a day, yes. you do your day, and um, and that will help upkeep the historical side. Mm -hmm. But that didn't work out, mm -hmm. so I started here. And when we wanted to change the roof of Daddy's garage, mm -hmm. the guy who was changing the roof heard us singing, and he mm -hmm. said, I, "My sister works at the cruise ship complex. I would like to hear what um, I would like her to hear what you are right. doing." Right. Uh -huh. And so she came and she said, "Wow, can you all entertain forty people?" And so, wow. so this that's is the first time, yeah. so like, it's only first gig, <laughs> so yes. to speak, okay. Yeah. I remember being in the front yard mm -hmm. one day pulling out weeds, and it was nothing like this, of course, nothing right. like this. And um, people were walking up the road and saying, what here, what do you know have? And I used to get vexed. I used uh, to say, we have so much to we offer. So much. We have a lovely, rich history, a yes. haunting history. And we also have food, we have our culture, we have our music, we even have our people. Our people are full of talent yes. and character. I'm going to tell you, the stories we have, if you go to a Lopino week, the stories you will get, you know. So, um, and I said, no, we have to do something about that, you know. And I wanted people to come to a place where they felt comfortable. I used to watch families come up just for a visit to Lopino mm -hmm. and they had nowhere to go. There, right. was no, there was the rum shop. And they would go in the rum shop asking for an ice cream or something. And right. that used to upset me. And I didn't like the idea of a mother and father and two little children going into, going a, into rum a rum shop. shop. So I wanted somebody to feel they, come, they came home to a place where they're not feeling threatened. They're not feeling uncomfortable. There was no low set of music. You know, they're just in a nice mm -hmm. little space. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's a pleasure doing what I'm doing. I'm very proud of what we have accomplished here. It's, yeah, it's, you should be. It's, you should be. It has been a long journey. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, this is, I had this dream that everybody in the village would be employed. Okay. You see, when I went to Venezuela and I took a bus by mistake one day and ended up in a little village called El Atillo. Mm -hmm. And El Atillo was just like Lopino. Just okay. like if you come up the bus and you land in a place we call it pasta over there, but, they, but their own was pathways with people pushing 
trolleys with ice cream, things that they made right, right there. Gotcha. And, and all around that square had every house was a different brightly colored painted house. And each house had um, something selling out of wood, out of uh, clay, out of anything, anything. And it was so, it was so eye opening for me that I said, let me go back home and, and bring try this that. back and try that. Wow. You know, and but bec I don't think because they didn't see what I saw, I think mm. that, it, that to bring it home to, to people. To do that it, it's very hard i like to tell people when my sister and i visited the first time coming here is more than just the food mm -hmm. it is an entire experience yes. it's the feeling that you get we almost yeah. felt like we didn't want to leave to be honest right mm -hmm. so and i think that's something mm -hmm. that you can't even put a price on that to be honest now in these times that we live in you can't put a price on that sort of home feeling, that mm -hmm. feeling of community, togetherness. I mean, even the air is different, you know what I mean? Definitely. So, guys, mm -hmm. please make Cafe Mariposa one of the places that you visit while in Trinidad, whether it be the diaspora, we're talking to the diaspora, we're talking to, you know, persons who now come into Trinidad for the first time. Yes, we have a lot to offer, but Cafe Mariposa is something special and I will, Yes, you, you know, you everybody, come, come, come. When you come, you'll want to come again. So, Bianca, thank you very much. I My think we're going to be getting My some pleasure. tilapia soon. I don't know where I'm going for the tilapia, <laughs> though, but we'll find space. Thank well, you very much. Yes, you're welcome. It's our pleasure. Thank you. All right. This is the fish that you could possibly catch at Agua Viva. You catch it at Agua Viva and then you bring it here and you have it specially prepared by Brenda. So Brenda, walk us through. Tell us what is on this plate, how you prepare the fish. Let us know. Okay, on the plate you have the tilapia from Agua Viva. Right. First of all, I, I clean it, um, scale it, take all the, the entries and all of that. And then mm -hmm. I put it in some milk to draw out all the... That I've never <laughs> seen or heard of before, putting it in the milk to draw yeah. the impurities. Okay, cool. Right. After that is done, then I season it. Mm -hmm. You don't season it for long. Then you put it in the pot right. with some oil and a little bit of um, the cocoa. Oh, the cocoa goes yes. in here as well, yes. right? Some fresh mint and onion, garlic and mint tomatoes. with fish. Now yes. that will be interesting. And all your other aromatics. So yes. you kind of pan fried and then braise it a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Okay, nice. And then what else we have working here? Here we have some fresh veggies. Mm -hmm. It's just string, uh, beans. string beans and some sweet pepper. Okay, nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. And that is that is sorted with turmeric, um, ginger and garlic and the other seasonings. Mm -hmm. So we're going to dig in. This is fresh tilapia prepared by Brenda cocoa and the tartness, the acidity from the tomatoes. Mm. Oh, this is nice, but the fish, oh yeah, the fish. Very moist, you'll see that. It literally melting away in my mouth. The texture of the fish literally melting away in my mouth. Try some of the veggies. Mm. The turmeric, the garlic. Love. They say you must always leave room for dessert. I, I agree probably with have that. this amount of room, but we're gonna make it work. 500%. So talk to me. What are we going? What are we, what's happening here? The ice cream mm -hmm. is cocoa tea ice cream. Mm -hmm. Well, we know some people like cocoa tea, right? So we thought, why not make an ice cream with it? Uh -huh. But you have to take it a little higher. Of course. So a little picante with a little tamarind, and that changes the whole world right there. Right. But that we so cocoa can. tea from ice cream form, and then it just went left field with the tart tambran, really playing on two opposite sides of the food spectrum here. But boom, boom, <laughs> it working, it working, it working. Tell me now about this, this one. This is a little bit of a delicate. This tastes like flowers. It's very refreshing. Yes. Pomerac, I love Pomerac. Very refreshing. Mm. And you know that it is Pomerac that you're having. Yummy. Yeah, no fillers. No fillers mm -hmm. in that. Nice. Pomerac, so be. Well, it's something but that we could eat. At least. Well, if I share it. Oh, my gosh. So explain to me this one and now. This is taking chocolate cake mix. Right. Our, our mixture. Okay. Right? And 
playing again with it in in different parts of the of your brain, of your flavor, right? So you tell me this is the chocolate. That is the chocolate cake. We made it in like a waffle making machine. Right. But she puts cream in it, so that cream changes your whole texture now. Mm -hmm. But we make a pineapple chow. Right. And put it and then put the chocolate on and it. And the chocolate. And then this is the cream here? Yeah. And what's in the cream? Is it coconut? What's in the cream? No, just, I think that just, is regular just cream. Just regular. Heavy cream, yeah. With like a whipping cream. So there's a crunch. There's a cream. Mm. Then there's a, the chocolate. And then there's a the little bit of the chow flavor from the, the uh, pineapple. Very nice and light. Not heavy. Not overly sweet either. Mm -hmm. Perfect way to close off. The day if you ask me. <laughs> Bienvenido a lo fino. Bienvenido a casa de Guerrero. Bienvenido a Mariposa. Nuestra casa es su casa. Te aproveche la comida. Que comparte con nosotros. Bienvenido a lo fino. Bienvenido mis amigos, bienvenido a lo fino, bienvenido mis amigos. Ay, oh my god, I love it! Guys, so this sums up our Cafe Mariposa experience. I had a whale of a time. Everything was top tier, so you just have to be here. The next stop is Las Lapas. We're going to Ashes, which is a little hike. You can access it through Lupino or off the North Coast. The producer say, walk with my hiking boots, so I'm coming ready. Come on, let me do this thing. Let's go. Good morning, Eat a Food family. We in Lopino, bright and early. Why? Because we're going to take a hike up Las Lapas to check out ashes at the top. It's supposed to be amazing views, nice cocoa tea, nice bake. Already with my knapsack, my crew ready. We're going to do this thing. So come, let me hike up. So how long again we have, Badawi? Uh, we have about 20 minutes, half an hour. Okay. Walk again. All right, okay, 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 all right. It's a, it's a... Yeah, well the trail kind of now start. Right, the okay, so what was when before was the warm-up? Yeah, let's just see warm-up. Listen, that was some warm-up. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Chris and Lassa. Nah. You know, it's always seem kind of thing the first time you're doing yeah, something, yeah. right? So, yeah. it's seeming like that now. It's a good pull. If you like exercising, which I do, you go burn some calories, you go sweat. So it's a good thing, but listen, that view better has be worth it, eh? Because my heart under pressure. <sighs> we go make it if we try. Just a little <laughs> into the thick of it. Into the thick of it. So the tree will not kind of start. So I don't know what we was doing before. That was the warm up. The warm up. Some warm up, right? So there we go. Aye. The journey now start. The journey now start. <laughs> the journey now start. Ah. reach or so they say the trail itself is not difficult was the lead up that was the tea fair the lead up was the hike but the actual trail and stuff is is pretty easy and um, I really can't wait to see this fantastic view that everybody's talking about so yeah I might be looking slightly disheveled slightly a little sweaty but that's all part of being out here outdoors we're on a hike so let me go oh wow So earlier we reach, we reach a feeling very accomplished, Asha's parlor and to be sure, last lapas, my first time to last lapas on a reach and there's a sign showing all that Asha's has, total local 
organic shop, honey, ruku, pepper sauce, hot tea, etc. I definitely want to get some ruku. I've seen some pay me. What else I've seen? I've seen some porn. I want to like myself a little bit. So let me go, let me go. Let me go, let me go. See you here too, man. Wow. Thank nice you. Make it yeah, up yeah, yeah, I make yeah. it. I'm, yeah. I barely made it, but I made it. It's <laughs> like Kilimanjaro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's, it's killer woman yeah. Jared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so I want to see what you have. I know for sure I want a bottle of Ruku oh, yeah. and I might want a bottle of Simo Shell as well. Yeah. But I see you have nice pay me, yeah. nice spoon. Yeah, 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 My yeah, grandmother yeah, used yeah, to yeah. make spoon long time. Yeah, that's a small spoon. Let me explain. It makes what cassava. Right. Right. Hello, it has pumpkin uh -huh. and sweet potato. Oh, nice. So it's heavy. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, I will and be rolling. Nice. I will be rolling yeah. down this hill yeah. out when I eat it. Like, um, it's like a little meal. Eh? Right. Cassava, pumpkin, and sweet potato. And sweet potato. Yeah. Nice flavor. I haven't had pumpkin for a while. It's pretty good, I must say. Three or four now, huh? You will like yourself. Nice. Uh, uh, listen, if I was to eat all of this, I wouldn't be able to make it down the hill. So I'll just share with the producer and everybody else around him. Listen, <laughs> I'm good for the week. <laughs> it's still warm. Yeah, it's still warm. Mm. I got your cinnamon. Well, a pimi is like a, it's a, it's a sweet pastel with no meat <laughs> on the sweeter side. It's like a dessert. It's like a dessert pastel, but without the, beet, without the meat, like a cornbread kind of thing. But it's um, steamed the same way a pastel is. So it has that the consistency of a pastel, but just without the meat. And it's on the sweet side. Mm -hmm. The consistency is great. I just stop myself from eating. <laughs> it's seasoned real nice. I love the spices that come into the cinnamon, the nutmeg. I did a real good job. So, tulum, tulum bum bum, is <laughs> why so I know it as a child. Basically, coconut and molasses. I haven't had this in years. All the orange peel rice, see? To be honest, I really wasn't much of a fan of it. But let me see, you yeah, right? But let me see if as an adult, you know, the palate will change, a little bit more refined, a little bit more adventurous. Let me see if I go out, if I go like it. Now, we'll see. Actually, it's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. It's, your taste buds are tuned to it and you still like it. Mm. Yeah. 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 And it's rich, I don't know. Extremely. Yeah. It is extremely rich. Wow. Mm. You're nothing poor here. You're nothing nice. Why? You put ginger in this too? Huh? You put ginger in this too? Yeah. yeah. Ginger. Tasty ginger too. Right. You see, not just plain. Well, yeah. It's not just plain, yeah, it's not yeah, just plain yeah, molasses yeah, and yeah, coconut. Yeah, that, oh, that it's refined. Yeah, yeah, it's for yeah. refined palates. Yeah. Okay. I don't even get a producer to take I pictures of just digging. <laughs> now, what kind of fig is this? A chiquito. Chiquito. Or oh, siki. Yeah. Siki. Yeah. Well, Trinidad and I say siki, mm -hmm. but it's supposed to be sucre. Because it derived from French, sugar fig. Right, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. makes sense. Yeah, you know your thing, man. Trini yeah, Trini does always turn wrong thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's how we are. Bananas are always good to build back up yeah. here, you know, little and sugar levels. If your sugar levels run low. And I mean, so. I know fake thing. That is real thing where pop yeah. down, make sure they take their time and ripe. When this now turning half ripe, we just boil it and fry it. With your little salt fish on there, yeah. so when you're eating, or you call it that bacalao. Bacalao, oh, yeah. Pops, okay. When you eat that again, oh gosh, you have to keep moving, you know, because you feel like it's a log, you know. Mm -hmm. Eat yeah, strong food, strong food. I ain't gonna lie, nice strong food. Okay. Yeah, and tastes good. Bacalao. Okay, 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 okay. Let me see. This way, let me see. 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 Oh my god. Wow. We in the mountains. <laughs> I mean, wow. Oh. 
Wow. I've never seen it so up like. Wait, you're that beautiful boy. You just it, you just have to be here. Is you see the different shadows because of the trees and the different mountains in between, and then the sun casting light in certain areas. So I mean, you know, you see plenty of people just draw paint pictures of the northern range. It still does not capture it like seeing it for yourself. It looking so lush, so green, it looking untouched. It was well worth it. Only Trinidad nice. We nice, you know, we nice. So Ollie, please, to keep Trinidad nice, Ollie, don't let her anything, eh? Please. Let me keep the place looking green and looking nice, no man. Don't trail it nowhere. Because this is what you are destroying potentially. Wow. Ollie, you're never too old to make new discoveries in life, and today I discovered Las La Paz. Olya, how is it? I've been living in Trinidad all these years, born and raised, and never visited this place before. And I know there are some of you out there that are just like me. I mean, this place is untouched. It is so serene. It was well worth waking up <laughs> four o'clock in the morning, taking the hike. Listen, it's good when you could do things in life and have zero regrets. And I have zero regrets about this because the view is absolutely amazing. And especially if you come up on this side, you have to make sure and check Asher's. Now on the right hand side is the Blanchichez Arima Old Road. And on the left hand side is the hike <laughs> that we're going to hike back. <laughs> to get home but make sure and check out Asha she have your tulum bum bum she have your pay me probably the best pay me I've ever had because I'm being honest with you I'm not a pay me person but hers was real good your cassava pone and the next time we come she says she's gonna make this bacalao which is the fig the CKA fig they boil it when it's half ripe and then they um do stew it up with salt fish and thing and onion and garlic only hear that song in, only hear that song in. Listen, I know sometimes we think that to take a vacation, you had to come out of your country. And to a certain extent, that is true. But not when you have not visited all of your country. And let me tell you something. We are living in a little paradise here. Trinidad nice. So only visit Trinidad. Take a moment and visit Trinidad. Explore and see what is out there.